Welcome back to the channel. I am Alexia Nicole and I'm living my life by design. Um, as y'all can see, I'm in my, my office since I'm always in my car. This is another month in real estate. Today is May 1st and we are out here in these real estate streets, honey. So we're just gonna jump right on into the month. It is May 1st. I am headed to the west side of Houston, Richmond, Katy area um, to meet up with a buyer. Um, she was in town, I believe, like around March, and we came out and we just kind of looked at different neighborhoods, tried to narrow down, um, you know, homes that she would be interested in. Um, we set a date for her to come back this weekend. We've got her pre-approved. Um, so now we're heading out to kind of just, you know, do a little bit more looking. We already know a specific um, builder and floor plan that she really likes. Um, but you know, just to be on the safe side, we're going to look at a few others and then hopefully this by, <clears throat> she's here today and tomorrow, Saturday and Sunday. So hopefully by tomorrow we will have her, um, under contract and moving to Houston by August, September. -ish. That is the goal for today. Yes. So let's go. No. Two story only. Oh, <laughs> yeah, <okay>, thank you. <laughs> I did that for a fact. <laughs> now, I do have this home, which is a very nice home. We can walk through this one. And that one's now it is. Oh, you need a two, you need a two story? Mm -hmm. I have no two stories. All I have is single stories. Other than, other than the Coleman. Other than the Coleman. Okay. And then I had that one. I mean, I, I basically called her for two days. I don't know. How, and she's how, not. Well, she had, we don't have a sign contract, but I, I told yeah. her I'd hold it yeah. for her. And I, I talked to her and I sent her an email last week saying I'm getting ready to call you soon and then now I'm getting ghosted. You so snooze, I don't you want, lose. I don't want to leave anybody on there. He don't have a Coleman for sale. Uh, he does. He does. Yeah. Okay. Uh, if you want to go see a Coleman. We would have to I, go to Ellison I, tomorrow. Well, no, Ellison. Oh, is no. The, no, that's the same one as the Bennett. I was getting oh, backwards. Oh, okay. Oh, but, something else ranch. Yeah. P a Porter Ranch and Jordan Ranch. Jordan Ranch. Because Porter Ranch is closed this weekend. They're both out. And Porter Ranch, that's the one y'all went to, right? Yeah. But he didn't show y'all the... Oh, I guess y'all didn't go because you didn't, you didn't have one. He didn't, so, yeah. Let me call up Stephen Reamer and see if he's got one. Yeah. Hey, y'all. Hey, welcome. Welcome to the next day. Um, I am headed to meet Brianna again. Um, I think I told y'all last night. I don't remember. But we, of course, narrowed down a floor plan that she liked. Um, basically yesterday we were out looking for neighborhoods just ha that had availability really you know um, so we went way out to some other neighborhood he said yes I have one of this two-story four-bedroom three bath home that you want um, but I don't actually have it to show they literally just laid slab um, so he told us you know which community actually has that floor plan as the model home so we can you know walk in and fill it out so that's what we're headed to do now um, and then I was also doing some research um, just making sure you know that we we find all possibilities for her. all right y'all we're here at the house let me show y'all the out outside all right four bedrooms three and a half bath or three bath two story clearly You know, we 
you're buying home, you have to be smart and think about resale value, especially if it's not your last and final home, you know? So let's go upstairs. I did also see another house on another side of town that meets her criteria um, but the house I don't think it's like I don't it's it's a new construction home I think it was built in 2018 but it's never been lived in um, and I think it's just kind of like in the middle of an older neighborhood um, but as far as the house itself it seems to meet everything that she's looking for so I sent a tour this morning you know and I asked her if she wanted to go see it and she said yes so we'll go take a look at that a double lot so th this this actual lot stops you know see where that pink thing is kind of comes across here but because he had to put a well that's propane but a septic tank for the property um, it had to be a certain amount of of course feet or whatever yards not whatever from the house so he had to put it on this lot so now the house includes this lot. Um, and then you'll see this fence will basically go down there. But this other lot he owns as well and is for sale too. Um, so we just have to kind of see what the options would be. The kids like this. Like Y'all like this house? <laughs> okay. So here's the living area, kitchen, and you have like a formal dining. This is the front yard. I'll go back out there and show y'all that. Um, you have garage here. What was this? A closet. This is the garage. Basic garage, y'all. So this is it's it's new construction that it's new construction. Um, and when I first spoke with Brianna, this is what she explained to me that she wanted. You know, something that had like a lot of land, you know, enough bedrooms, just space for her and her family to grow. She likes kind of like that rural feeling. So when I found this, I was like, hmm. It's really a 50-50 chance of if she likes it or not. And she seems to like it a lot more than the actual house that I thought, you know, we might have um, um, made a deal on today. But we'll see. We'll see how it goes from here. It looks good by itself.
good morning y'all it is the next day monday may 3rd yesterday we were out with brianna um she ended up falling in love with that house um you know besides what anybody else may think about the surroundings it's her and her family that has to live there and she is comfortable with it and she thinks it is a good investment which it is um so i did the comps last night um Houses like those sometimes are just so hard to comp out because there's not a lot of homes um, particularly like that one with those same surroundings. Um, so there is a, a newer neighborhood, maybe like less than two miles away from there, which is, you know, mostly where I've had to get the comps from, from that home. The homes over there that are comparable to that house are definitely selling at what they're asking for. So originally the house was listed at $360,000. Um, and because it's been sitting on the market, I think about five months or so, they have um, reduced the price down to what is now $325,000. Um, when I did the comps, um, the value of the home could really be more than that because of the size of the lot that it's on. The lot is about 12,000 square feet. It's basically a double lot. The other homes um, that were comparable were, of course, on like lots about seven, six thousand, six thousand ish, seven thousand ish square feet. So you also have to take into consideration, you know, the size of the lot, blah, 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 blah. So, anyways, she's comfortable with that. Now, this morning, I'm about to write up her offer. We are going to be offering $330,000 asking, I told her yesterday we were going to ask for $5,000 back. You know, I've, I've told y'all how that works. You give the seller more in the offer price and they give you cash to help you close, but it balances out. So we're offering $5,000 more, but we're going to get that cash on the back end if he agrees. Um, but I, for whatever reason this morning, I was like, let's ask for 7,500 and see what they come back and say. Um, she's going to be using um, a down payment assistance program. And the way that this particular program works, they give you either three, four or 5% of down payment assistance. And depending on which percentage you choose, the higher your interest rate is. So 3%, I think is like a 3.375 interest rate, the 4% is a 3.625, and then the 5% was um, like a 4% interest rate. So, um, of course, we still want to be smart. So the more money that we can get the seller to give us, the less down payment assistance that she'll truly need. So I'm going to shoot for 7,500 to see if we can get her to stick at that 3% um, down payment need. And then, yeah, so we're going to write this offer up and see, see what we can make shake. Um, hopefully, hopefully they agree. Um, so yeah, 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 yeah. This is exciting, y'all. Um, the only other concern that we had on the property is Brianna wasn't intending on closing on a house until like August, September. So her savings goals for having her closing funds were, you know, kind of more set towards then. When I did have, um, when I did have the conversation with the listing agent and I asked, you know, if he would potentially be willing to do an August close, which is, is quite a bit of an extension. It's May 3rd, y'all. So... I knew it was a little bit unrealistic because everybody just wants to get their house sold. That means he's going to be taking his house off the market for about May, July, oh, June, about 90 days waiting for one buyer. So she said he wasn't comfortable with that, which I absolutely respect. Um, so that's really why we're asking for the, the additional closing cost. Um, because, you know, that kind of shortens her time period to be able to stack more and more and more without needing the down payment assistance. Um, so I'm going to um, put in the contract um, a 45 day close, which should put us about mid June at this point. And um, her lease ends in Dallas, July 
the end of July. So her last rent payment will be due July 1st. Um, and then her first mortgage really probably wouldn't be until August, maybe even September, just depending on how the closing date falls. So, you know, I like to make sure that my clients are also comfortable with that aspect of it. Um, but yeah, um, I'm excited that we found something. I know she's excited. Um, and then, of course, I'll let y'all know how it works out. Um, on other notes, we finally, finally got an executed contract on this house. I told y'all at the end of April's vlog that we received an offer. And, oh Lord, <laughs> that, um, those sellers of mine, really it's my stepfather, it's my stepfather's name on the house, so he's technically the seller, but me and my mother were trying to convince him to sign the dang on contract, and he was just holding out to the weekend to see if we got any more, which we didn't, and I knew that was going to happen, but anyways, we finally got that executed, so that contract has been sent off to the title company, um, and the buyer's lender. Um, so now today, our seven-day option period starts on this home. So they're going to need to schedule um, all of their inspections and all of those things to come out. And then we'll see what the inspection report says. Lord. <laughs> and we need to put up the gate because they do want that gate. And it was listed on the MLS that we was going to put it up. So we got to put it up. <laughs> Good morning. Today's inspection day. It doesn't look like mother's leaving the house. Mom, you're not leaving? No. Why? The guy's out there doing the fence. Oh, the fence is getting installed too. And then here's the guys. They are here getting ready to start working on installing the gate. Hey, y'all. So I haven't updated you from this weekend's um, showings with Brianna. Um, so that last house that we went to look at, the one that was just, you know, immaculate by itself with the other surroundings, Brianna fell in love with that house, y'all, like, absolutely fell in love with it. Um, so we went ahead and submitted an offer on the property. They were asking 325000 I think I told y'all this, right? Okay, so fast forward, we offered the um the 330 um $5,000 above the asking price because it's 325 yesterday the listing agent says hey i spoke with um my seller about it and they really want to sell this property with the other lot um that is right next door because he owns all these lots um because the way the how it's situated if y'all saw the backyard that other lot is like directly behind another lot that already has a house on it or whatever, right? And I think she said he owns that too, whatever, whatever. So even if he was to sell this lot to someone else, it's just like in an awkward position where nobody can really access it. And then you would have to go through, you know, getting, you know, easements and all, blah, 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 blah. So he's wanting to sell it to this one person who is buying the house with the double lot and then the lot right next door. It's his goal. So we had only submitted an offer for just the house. Um, so she's like, you know, he basically counter offered with, you know, um, 335 total for all three. Well, or for, I don't know, for the house plus the lot by itself. He had the lot listed at $20,000, and she had told me this, you know, before we even submitted the offer, but he took it off of the multiple listing service because people were only calling in regards to the lot and not the actual house. Um, so, and I was like, well, $20,000 is, you know, that just puts Brianna over, you know, her, her purchase price. So she came back, and when we were doing, you know, when we were talking, she was saying he's willing to sell her the lot and the house for 335 total he was like he's willing to sell the lot at just tax value which is a great deal because you know at the end of the day he can't he can't just really throw it in for free you know because he's gonna have to pay taxes on it so he has to get some sort of money from it um so that would have made it 335 um or three basically like right about like 335 and a half or something like that i don't really remember the exact number at this point but, um, and then no seller contributions. 
So it's really just putting Brianna five thousand dollars above, well six thousand above her um, purchase price, which you know just get, she's not approved for that much. She's right at three thirty. So I was like, man, okay, let me talk to you know her lender and see what we can work out. And then um, Brianna texted me back, and I told her everything, and she was like, well, can he just do everything for um, the three thirty? And I was like, you know what? He's already reduced it from 360, and that's just the house itself, right? The house and the, the double lot that it's sitting on. It was originally listed at $360,000. He's reduced it to 325. Um, now we're asking him basically to throw in this other lot for $5,000. So I said, but you know what? My job is to do my due diligence on your end, and represent you. This rain is probably live in the background, but my job is to represent you. So I said, I'm asked anyway. I asked, and the agent was like, okay, let me ask and come back now today. She said, he said yes, but no seller contributions, of course. Um, and he wants to up our option period to $500 for 10 days, um, which, you know, is just, you know, for 10 days, if he's going to take the market off the house and then we decide to back out, then he gets to keep $500 is basically what that is if we move forward. Then that $500 gets credited towards closing. Um, so that's just where we're at right now. I'm waiting for the listing agent to send me a detail of any other, like, you know, counter offers specifications that he may have. But um, God is working and moving and making things shake, honey. Because that's, you know, like, that's a really good... That's a really good deal for about. It's gonna end up being about almost, I think, sixteen to eighteen thousand square feet of property that she's gonna acquire for the um, three hundred thirty thousand dollars. So, yeah, just waiting for um, the agent to send the email, and then we can, you know, resign the contract, and then we'll be good on that end. So, yay! I'm excited about that. Y'all like my shirt? It's, it's from Zara. I know this is real estate blog, but I just really love this shirt. It says Barbie style icon, and clearly it's a black Barbie. I was like, ugh, I'm not even into graphic tees, but I had to buy this. Anyways, um, now with um, Nakivia and Charles, my clients that are selling their home and buying a new one. So we were supposed to be closing on the sale of their home tomorrow um so of course yesterday <laughs> i'm texting email and calling title and the lender because i still haven't received any closing documents right so call title and they're like oh well you know we still haven't received any closing documents from the buyer's lender which we've been through this before like i don't really know i don't know what the hold up is over there and then she was like you know and i'm still waiting for um payout amounts for on the seller side so when we do close how much they need to send to pay off their current mortgage and blah blah blah, blah. and also there hasn't been a survey done on their current property in in our contract um, it was agreed that the buyer would be paying for a new survey on the home. So when you're, you know, unless it's cash, anytime you're using a um, a loan, especially FHA and VA, um, you have to get a survey for the property that shows, you know, what all is included in the sale of this home. So they didn't have a survey. They might have misplaced it. I, you know, who knows? But they just didn't have one on record. So that I'm speaking of the sellers. Nikki V and Charles did not have a survey on record. So always in the contract, it, it breaks down, you know, how is the survey going to be acquired and who's getting it? It was the buyer's job to get this survey. So Title said that she had been asking them about this survey and, you know, nothing had been done yet usually title will order the survey but the buyer has to say kind of have to give that like go ahead like okay go ahead here's the money you know get this done um or sometimes it just gets you know put on the closing table amounts but that's not done yet so i was calling the buyer's agent yesterday and he wasn't answering and usually he's, he's really good at being responsive so it was 
you know, I was just like, mm, what's going on? So he finally called me back at like six o'clock last night, said he had to go out of town for an emergency, and I just updated him, and he's like, oh gosh. And I was like, yeah, oh gosh. So uh, he's like, well, I might know somebody that can come out and do a survey. Um, did I say a survey is just, I think I said this, I don't know, but a survey is just a map of the property. It literally, not like a super detailed map. I'll try to put one in here and show y'all what a survey looks like. Um, so it's not really something that's like hard to get done, but just the way that appraisal people, survey people, inspectors, like the way the real estate market is moving, you know, sometimes it may take a day or two or three to get these things done. And we really don't have that long. Like I'm hoping we can still close on this by Friday. Today is now when Tuesday. Today is Tuesday. So I'm hoping, you know, the goal that I gave to the buyer's agent was to get somebody out there and hopefully be able to give us a survey within, you know, a 24 hour period. Um, the title company said, you know, she requested payout information and then that should be in by today by 5 p.m. because they were like, okay, give us 24 hours. So hoping we can wrap all of that up as far as the sale of their current property. Now, the new property that they're purchasing, the model home where they had to, um, you know, do a little demolition to install the garage and driveway. Um, we were supposed to do our inspection on that last week, Friday, and heard from um, the sales agent from the builder. And she's like, hey, you know, they're a little behind. I will update you all on Monday, which was yesterday, as to when we can reschedule the inspection. As of yesterday, they still don't have a date. So she said, okay, I have another meeting with, you know, the builder on Thursday. And hopefully by then they'll have a better time frame to let us know when we can do the inspection. But as of right now, we will not be closing on the 10th. We were supposed to be closing May 10th. Today is May 4th. And they're still not done with demolition um, demolition on the home. So, um, yeah, which is... And then, you know, for, for Nikivian and Charles, it's not great because even if we still end up closing on Friday for the sale of their current home, then, you know, of course, they were still going to go a few days, like a week or so with, uh, like five days with, you know, of like going to a hotel or staying with family until we were able to close on their new property because they didn't want to do a lease back. Um, but now that may be extended and we don't really have a time period of how long that that could possibly be extended for. So that's where we're at with that. Um, I'm about to start shopping with a, another client. Um, shout out to Tia who watches the YouTube vlogs, girl. She sent um, her boyfriend, I think, um, to reach out to me and um, we've got him pre-qualified. Now it's time to start the house shopping process with him. So that's always exciting. Um, so yeah, that's it. Um, that's all the updates that I got for you all. I have a few other people in the pipeline that, you know, we're just trying to get pre-qualified and, you know, get their financial situations together. Um, and then hopefully we'll, you know, be working with them in, you know, later on down the line here, but things are going good. So that's it. That's all. Uh, just got this email from the listing agent for Brianna's house. So let me, um, go in this office and get to work. Woohoo, y'all. Brianna is under contract. We got all the details on the contract figured out. I had to send her that contract like 10 times this morning to resign because every time myself and the agent, we were sending back and forth to each other, we kept seeing something, you know, that was incorrect. And it was like both of us. I was like, oh my God. Um, but finally, she is now under contract. We have set a closing date of July, uh, of June 21st for her. Um, and yeah, she's excited. She is excited. Um, so we'll get the earnest money and option fee, you know, sent over to title. And then we'll need to um, call some inspectors to see if we can get them out ASAP. Um, we need some really detailed inspectors because, you know, as we discussed, that home has the propane tank, it has the, the septic tank, and it has, I believe, the water well on the property. So all of those things will need to be inspected as well. So that's where we're at with her. Uh, and then as far as Nakivia and Charles, um, we were able, I don't, ooh, 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 I don't pass up where I'm supposed to be going. Can I turn in here? 
Yeah, I can turn it here. Um, as far as Nikivia and Charles, um, what's going on with them? So, yeah, so I think I was telling you about the survey. The um, buyer's agent was unfortunately not able to get. I can park right here. Make sure it's behind me. Um, the buyer's a the buyer's agent um, wasn't able to get his guy to go out and do the survey within a 24-hour period. So it was like, boo. So we went ahead and ordered it through the title company, and then fast forward to now, um, Nikivia was actually able to find her original survey in her original closing docu documents from 2009. So I was like, oh, yes, hallelujah. So I went ahead and sent that to them. So now we don't have to wait necessarily for that as long as they accept that one. They haven't made any changes to the property, so it should be just fine. Um, and then with the sale of their new home, um, still just waiting until tomorrow to hear back from Brittany, the sales agent over there at the, um, the builder. Um, and yeah, we're all good. We had a few other things to clear up uh, as far as just like, you know, payoff amounts and we got that pretty much handled. <laughs> Alright, now we are on our way. We just did a cute little 30 minute stop at the title company. They um, moved locations so they did like a grand opening party on Cinco de Mayo. You know just to network and you know put a face to the name of the people that you're constantly emailing and talking to during these transactions um now i am headed to go meet travis to go look at one house he sent me another one he wanted to look at but it's basically already off the market they're not allowing any more showings so Y'all know this market, you have to move fast, like so fast, y'all. Um, I got cut off earlier. Um, but so yeah, with the QBN and Charles, like everything is pretty much handled. Um, when I just left <clears throat> when I was just at the mixer. Um, I did see the lady that I've been emailing about um the QB and Charles file as far as like the survey and stuff and she said she got it and she's um, sent it over to, you know, whoever she needs to send it to to see if they approve it. So she hasn't canceled the other order for the survey yet, you know, just to make sure that this one is okay. Um, and then hopefully there's this other documentation that we're having um, sent overnight to them that um, needs to clear up some information. I'm not going to tell y'all what the information is just because I don't need y'all all in my customer's tea. But actually, I mean, it's really not that big of a deal. I can probably say this. Um, so when Nakivia um, first bought <clears throat> the house that she's currently in, she used a grant program through the city of Houston, right? So a lot of people do that. You use grant programs, but some of these grant programs come with stipulations. And this particular one that she used, I think the amount was like $18,500, $19,500, whatever. They gave, you know, they gave her that money towards the cost of the home or towards closing, whatever it could be. But a stipulation was that she had to stay within the home for 10 years. But the title company's job is, or part of what they do is when you are selling the home or when you're buying the home, either, either both parts, right? The title's company job is to make sure that they are giving a clear title to the buyer. So they look, you know, they pull the title and see if there's any liens or if you have, you owe anybody money, if there's anything on your title that is not going to allow them to give it over to the buyer, you know? So one, we already knew clearly like a lot of people, they still owe money on their mortgage. That means, you know, the title goes and gets a payout amount from their, you know, whoever holds their, from their lender and says, okay, well, this is the amount that, you know, from the proceeds of the sale of the home, we'll have to give to them. Um, so we knew that was there clearly, but then she was like, well, there's this other lien on here and I, I'm not seeing where this is from. And, you know, so I asked um, Nikivia, and she's like, I don't really know. And then I told her the amount. She was like, wait, that kind of sounds like, you know, the grant that I got. And we had to have the house for 10 years. 
and you know it's been more than 10 years she bought that house in 2009 it's 2021 now and I was like okay and so I told title she had underwriting check um, you know underwriting is the people that's always in your business she had underwriting check um, and there was no verbiage within you know this lien that it was a 10 year hold. So if that verbiage would have been there, then they probably could have handled that on themselves and just, you know, didn't whatever they needed to do. But because that verbiage is not there, now we have to go to whoever has the lien on the home and actually get them to basically remove it. So that's what we were working on between yesterday and today. It was a little late notice, you know, that this was happening because title sent the, they sent me the, um, my phone keeps overheating y'all <laughs> on this dashboard and it's hot out here in Houston, Texas. Anyway, so title sends me the um, title commitment with the schedule that shows anything that's on the title, right? And I looked at it and it was normal. It showed the mortgage that they owed and it showed that amount, but they didn't say anything at the time that, um, you know, they didn't know where this amount was coming from. Usually if it's something alarming, they will say, hey, we need to figure out what this is. They just sent it normal, boom, boom, boom. Um, so anyways, so I did a little researching because the lady at times, she's like, well, I don't really know what this is. And, you know, I talked to the Kiva, kind of jogged her memory. And she was like, well, yeah, that was the amount that they granted us. And we had to do a 10-year thing. And they sent a letter every 10 years to make sure that we were still in the property, blah, blah, blah. And so I was like, okay, call this number, see what they can do. Fast forward today, called the number, got it handled. Now they are overnighting some documents saying that that lien is clean and clear. We can take that off the title. Hallelujah. Um, because if not, what would have happened? They would have had to pay that amount at closing. So that would have been $20,000 less, almost, I'm rounding up, less of profit that, you know, they're making. And of course, we don't want to do that because they're planning to put down a good chunk of the profit that they're making off of this home onto the new home. Um, so yeah, but even with all of that, I still don't think we'll be able to close by Friday. Just, you know, it is what it is. So hopefully... You know if all of that is clear and good maybe we can close um, by Tuesday of next week because they still need to send the closing disclosures and title and the buyer's lender will still need to balance um, so closing still delayed <laughs> still delayed um, that's I that's it everybody else is just kind of like in chill mode you know like people are still building and that's it. I don't think my next closing will be until June. I should have like two or three closings in June after I do these two closings um, this month. Then, of course, leases and whatever. So, wish me some luck, y'all. Going out with Travis and hopefully we can um, find a house for Travis um, sooner or later. He's He's been a great client so far, you know. Easy. You know, just call me, talk give you what tell you what what needs to be done get get that paperwork in and we good to go you know let's let's start house shopping <laughs> all right y'all i'm waiting for my client he's stuck in a little traffic so there's this um kb neighborhood right across the street um, i'm sure they don't have anything available but i'm just gonna go in and see what information i can get for what they have coming up if possible all right, so I was right about KB Homes next door. They definitely don't have anything, and they're also a bit out of his price point. Now I'm at the house that. Now I'm at the house that he's gonna meet me at, and it's a nice house, but it's just, it's. They haven't decluttered a thing, and the listing agent did say, "Hey, the house is full of clutter." It's a great house, you know, just try to look past all of their personal items. And so I'm just in here taking a look before he gets here. And um, it is a nice house. It's actually really nice. You know, hopefully, ooh, the garage is packed to the max. <laughs> Hello, y'all. 
y'all hello so let me update y'all so right now it's actually supposed to be heading out to fresno to the house that we have under contract for brianna because um it was getting inspected today um, and unfortunately i didn't get the text message from the inspector because i told him to text me about an hour before he was going to be finished because it takes me like 50 minutes to drive out there from where i live and the signal in the area isn't that great. So uh, his text message never sent. So when I called him, he's like, oh man, I sent you a text like an hour ago. I was like, oh, I didn't get it. Anyways, he gave me the rundown and um, the rundown wasn't that great. So I was like, oh no, like I'm not looking forward to telling Brianna a lot of this stuff. And he just kind of gave me like, the major things and he's like you know and then i just have a whole bunch of other stuff on the report so one of the major things is like the air condition and you know things like that and it is a new house it's new construction so usually you know with new construction they're supposed to go back and just kind of fix everything to like brand new standards especially because we have it on the new construction contract but i don't know y'all so we'll we'll see uh, with Nakivia and Charles on the sale of their current home, the buyers have finally got final closing information. They just need to send closing documents. So I'm still thinking at this point, like it's Friday now, I'm still thinking we probably won't realistically close until Tuesday or Wednesday. Like we extended it to the 14th. So that's until next Friday, but hopefully it'll be closed before that. Um, because you, once you send closing documents, you have to wait like three days or whatever the rule is before you can actually close. Or, well, initial closing documents, you know? Um, and then with the house that they're buying, um, I text the sales agent yesterday and she still didn't have an update for us. So she said, you know, hopefully she would be able to get us like a solid, you know, date today of when we can do um, a third party inspection and, you know, a a, a potential closing date on that property. Um, oh, and I'm thinking I need to call somebody back. And that's it, y'all. So I was looking forward to going out to Brianna's house, but you know, by the time I get there, it'll be 2 p.m. It's 12:45 now, and uh, Mr. Russell would have been gone. So next time. Hey, y'all. Hey, hey, hey. So we got an update here on the parentals house. Our option period ends today. We did a seven day option period for the buyers. They just flew in last night and they were just at the house um, taking their first in-person tour of the home. And I just heard from the list. And I just heard from the buyer's agent and he said, you know, all is, all is still a go. They still like the house as far as any repairs because we did have an inspector come out y'all saw that the other day or they had an inspector come out the other day which is normal of course um drive your car sir um and they don't want any repairs because i was literally telling the parentals last night i was like something is up like this is just weird because the, our, the house was built in 1990 it's not going to be perfection. And granted, you know, the parentals have done a lot of things over the past few years, uh, you know, to just bring the house, you know, up to date. And, you know, they put in new water, heat them. We got, you know, new air conditioning systems, you know, new roof in 2016, something like that. But he was like, honestly, he was like, the report was pretty clean. He was like, there's nothing major, you know, on there for us to like go tip for tat about. He was like, it's the cleanest report I've seen in a long time. And I was like, well, and I'm like, these people must really just want this house and not want to, you know, push no buttons. So I was like, okay. So option period ends here in three and a half hours because, you know, business days end at five. So all contractual things end at 5 p.m. Um, so I was like, wow, 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 you know, wow. <laughs> Very surprised by that, honestly. Um, because, you know, they, they have the option to nitpick if they want. Um, but hey, it's all a go. So that is good news. We will be moving forward and hopefully closing on, you know, 
the house June 4th when we're scheduled to close. Woohoo! I did get Brianna's inspection report back. I haven't had a chance to um, look at it yet. Um, I told her we would just schedule a call for tomorrow morning just to go over it in detail because just from the phone call I had with the inspector, you know, there's quite a bit on there. So <sighs> I'll update y'all on, on her house tomorrow. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Hey, vloggy vlog. So we are at McKeever and Charles' house. Um, Anthony, the inspector, is here today. And I just came to hopefully run into one of the builder people because we got questions. Because we're supposed to be closing Friday and it doesn't look anywhere close to being ready. So, so oops, Lord, I'm about to murder myself. As y'all can see, the garage door still isn't up. It's just a lot going on. It looks crazy. All right, y'all. So the house is all empty. I tell this is the media room. It would be real nice if they left this TV. Or is this a fake TV? It's still so light. But it's no. Um, Charles is actually here, the hubby. I didn't know he was going to be here. Luckily, he ran into the builder that I was looking for. But she's gone by the time I got here, so I was able to get her phone number from him. So I'll give her a call to ask about the garage door and... Um, the realistic time frame of things like this I'm not nervous because there's a crack there the builder you know they want to close they want their money but they also know that it needs to be done and in tip top shape so one of the Jack and Jill bedrooms. I had kind of forgot what upstairs looks like up here. Oh yeah. And then the polka dot wall. Woo, yippee. So I just spoke with, with the builder and she says she believes that everything is gonna be done by Friday. Um, the garage door should be in tomorrow. The sod for the front yard, the landscaping should be done. Um, and as soon as we get her the inspection report, we're gonna send that directly to her. She said most of those things are probably gonna already be on her list of things to be done. Her exact quote, we can get a lot of things done in a little bit of time. So I said, okay. I said, well, you know, I just have to make sure, especially when we're this close to a closing date and a house is in this state, that um, we have a realistic time frame. So I said, realistically, do you think that these things will be done by Friday at 1 p.m.? Because that's when we do our final walk. And she said, she said, yes, with confidence. So, you know, it's, it's the same story from all these builders, you know, just manufacturer delays, shipping delays, trades, i.e. landscapers, you know, all these people that come in and, and build the house, you know, make the house a home. So yeah, basically just, there's a lot of work to be done and not enough workers. Um, it's just not enough people to go around, so things are taking a little bit longer to get done. And you know, Houston just got hit hard with that storm too. So on top of just, you know, builders building homes and those type of delays, then people that had damage to their homes needed the same materials. So it's just a lot, but we're gonna get to closing on Friday. <sighs> and then closing on Thursday first and then closing on Friday. So yeah, we gonna get there. <laughs> it's not blowing cool air. Yeah, I'm gonna look at the uh... What does that little thing in your hand do? Where? That thing. Oh, just for uh, temperature checks and moisture. Oh, okay. Uh, it doesn't find moisture, but it can give me different temperature changes. Mm-hmm. And it helps me detect moisture. Thanks, Anthony. So we're back at the house. We got sod coming in. They're getting ready. That gentleman is over there about to install the garage. This is the first walkthrough. So yesterday we did the inspection and then of course now we're doing the first walk through and then 
two hours before we close, we'll come back and do the final walkthrough. I am very, I'm just scooching my car up to get out the way so these gentlemen can get their work done. Um, but really I could park right here because now, oh, so well, let me just go down here. Um, yesterday after leaving, I was like, woo, okay, they got a lot of work to do. But sis, the builder promised, she was like, we're gonna get it done, we're gonna get it done. So it's nice to come back today and see that the actual materials are here for them to get it done. Cause that's the biggest worry. It's like, I don't, I know you can get it done, but are the, are the things here? Like we're not still waiting on shipment. So they're here, let's go finish the walkthrough. All right, y'all feeling really, really good about this walkthrough. It's 11 o'clock now, I got here at 9.30, I was late. But um, the builder walked through everything. The inspection report um, came while we were there. So we were still able to go over the full inspection report. And we pretty much had pointed out everything um, just from you know her knowledge and what I was seeing. Um, and was able to get her to take down notes and you know have everybody come out between now and final walkthrough on Friday to have this house looking spick and span. Um, and it actually looks really good. It is the model home once again. So it was built in 2019 and you know, they've had a lot of just through traffic. That's what model homes have, you know, and it's, you know, it's the, the office for the salespeople. So of course, like the carpet needs to be, I wanted it shampooed, but she was like, you know, we'll spot clean and just make sure that it looks good. Um, and just very minor wear and tears. So I'm, I'm happy as we can see they have, all, you know, all of that green was just brown an hour ago. So progress, honey, progress. Um, now I'm headed to that builder's event. Um, yeah, let's go. Happy Thursday, May 13th, AKA closing day for the sale of Nakivia and Charles house. Yay. Uh, everything. Everything is just always last minute. We've got the um, the final closing documents yesterday. There was one thing that was incorrect on there. Um, they still had us paying $500 towards home warranty for the buyers, which if you all remember when we were negotiating based off the appraisal price and, you know, finding a common ground, um, we agreed that we were not going to pay for a home warranty for them since we were going to be lowering the price point. Um, so yeah, we had to get them to take that off last night. So the escrow agent, Natalie, over at my hair, y'all, I need my hair down so bad. The escrow agent sent me that email like at 11 o'clock last night. I was like, oh, she's working late. But you know what? We all got to work late and early sometimes. So it is what it is. So I'm excited for them today. The sale of their house and then the purchase of the new house tomorrow. Uh, the timing is just working out great. Um, what kind of, I mean, we are delayed. I mean, we were supposed to <laughs> be doing this closing on the 5th on Cinco de Mayo and that didn't happen. But hey, hey, we're here. It's all good. Um, yeah, so that's, that's what's happening today in the real estate world. That's, that's pretty much it. Hey y'all, we are finally heading to closing from the Kivia and Charles. This is exciting. It has been about, what, a month and a half, six weeks or so in the making, and we have finally made it here. Um, I need to go pick up, um, I ordered some Tiff treats um, for just a little small token of appreciation closing gift. They, you know, they, they have their double closing, so they'll get their bigger gift tomorrow. Um, but of course, you know, what realtor shows up empty-handed to a closing? I tried for that not to be me. Um, but yeah, so everything's good. The The buyer closes morning at 9 a.m. So, you know, they're already, the agent has already been texting me, you know, about him setting up electricity and needing coal to get in the house. And I'm like, yo, 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 sir. Technically, we haven't even funded yet. So you really shouldn't be in that house until we fund. But, you know, it's it's all good it's all good um so yeah let's roll let's go
y'all i've made it back to the house and look it looks like a house what a miracle what a miracle final walkthrough is done there are a few little things it was not perfection the uh what where am i at what oh heck i'm passing up where i'm trying to go um it was not perfection there was one thing we didn't notice at the first walk through the drawer for the powder bathroom on the sink was a little it was broke um and <laughs> the builder lady the woman that's over the building of the homes she's like oh it's not broke it's just and i'm like sis it's broken <laughs> like and then come to find out at the end of everything i asked i was like tony where are you from because you 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 giving me a vibe here sis and she's like oh i'm jamaican i'm like oh that's where he over here i feels you um so anyways so they're gonna have to either they're, tr they're currently working on it trying to get it's just like the drawers off the hinges but i just think just wear and tear after a year and a half or however long that the home has been the model home um it's you know it's 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 not smooth and it's not staying on hinge so i was like sis y'all either gonna have to fix that or get somebody else to come out here and then the carpet just had like a a few spots in it, especially on the stairs that they didn't get out very well she said she's gonna go ahead and get those out herself and i'm like okay sis you know get them out yourself and then in the primary bedroom that they have an accent wall in there which it's beautiful the accent wall but it's wallpaper and so of course it was decorated and they had you know there's there was holes in the wallpaper from the decorations that they had up um and just the way that they filled in the holes they tried to match it as best as possible and you can just see it like it's a, it's a bit of an eyesore but you know they um, according to tanya there's nothing they can do about that but hopefully whatever bed that they have or that they get you know will the headboard hopefully will cover it or if they just get some artwork they can cover it pretty easily but you know it's just one of those things so you know she's like well it is the model home so it is being sold as is and i was like mm, i don't know about that sis not all the way as is because if it was just as is we wouldn't be here doing um inspections and final walkthroughs and you know making sure this has been done and whatever whatever but besides all of that it is all good um i'm i'm still very pleased that um they chose this house because it, it is a beautiful house it really really is and i think they will be happy there for a long time to come so anyways now we are heading to oh i'm gonna get me something to eat really quickly and now we're heading to the title company to actually close so that's exciting so some of these wackle doodle do title companies still won't let realtors come up and i'm just like sir i can sit on the other end of the table anyway so nikki and charles are upstairs signing got their closing gift here waiting for them and then that's gonna be it. Some clients I don't like to let go of, and they're one of them. <laughs> so closing has been wonderful. This whole process has been up and down. But Alexia is the best in H Town, y'all. Hey! Out. <laughs> it's a, ever. Yes. In, in the world. In the world. In the world. Best oh, sorry. We Thank y'all. Yeah. Thank y'all. That's so sweet. We yes. appreciate you. You're welcome. <laughs> Good morning, happy Saturday. It is the day after closing with Nakibia and Charles. And honestly, y'all, my heart is just a little sad. Um, long story short, when you close and you, you know, have to pay the title company, you have to provide the title company with some funds. Um, that did not happen yesterday. So remember, we had two closings back to back. The sale of their house was on Thursday and the purchase of the new house was yesterday. So the sale, when when we closed on Thursday, 
that title company was supposed to wire um, their closing costs for the new home to the other title company. That did not happen in time. They had all day yesterday, because we did close, you know, end of business day on Thursday. So it was supposed to be processed the next day, Friday. They had all day to wire it. And for whatever reason, it didn't they didn't do it until the title company from Thursday did not wire the funds to the title company on Friday in time. So when we closed at 3 p.m., um, you know, they thought that we had received, they thought they had received the funds and they were like, okay, everything's good, let's go. And then for whatever reason, she double checked and she had not received it. You know, and once five o'clock hits, you know, wiring and all of that ends, title companies close and they're closed on the weekend, which also makes it even worse. So now they have to wait until Monday to get their keys. And I just hate when things are out of my control. I think I've expressed that on the vlog plenty of times before. So yeah, um, now we just have to wait until Monday until the title company opens. And then I'm sure the money will be there. It's just, it's just a, a bad timing thing. Like it's, it's very frustrating, but <sighs> that's that with that um it'll be okay um but now i'm out and about with um another client travis we are searching for a house today and we're gonna look at about 10 homes today and see if anything is worth putting an offer in on so yippee y'all we are still out in the streets with travis and tia and we're like on our headed to our seventh house or something like that sixth or seventh but i just love one house and if you're an agent hear me loud and clear <laughs> because this is so annoying clearly nobody nobody enjoys wasting their time so i go to this house i scheduled it it's a go-in show right which means nobody lives there you know yes you still scheduled an appointment but you can just literally just go and, and show it you don't really have to be like within certain time frame or you know whatever whatever so or really more like an appointment really isn't necessary you just go and show because it's empty it's a vacant home so i go <laughs> and i'm preparing to show it and there's a car outside and the door is open i was like mm, you know and i had been sitting out there for about 10 minutes i was still waiting for tia and travis to come because we took a little you know a little food break or whatever and so I go inside, well I ring the doorbell, and the guy comes and he was like, I was like, hey, are you showing the house? He was like, no, I'm, I'm the inspector. I'm like, inspector? Why is the house being inspected if, <laughs> you know, it's still available? He's like, well, from what I know, somebody paid me to inspect the house. So I'm like, mm, that's weird, because it shows on the MLS, the multiple listing service, that the house is back on the market. So... Long story short, I called the agent. I'm like, what's the status of the home? She's like, oh, we got an offer. I just I just forgot to update it, which is annoying. Annoying. Like, what you mean you got an offer and forgot to update it? I should report you to Trek, sis. <laughs> Trek, the Texas Real Estate Commission. <clears throat> you, like, you can't be doing that. Like, don't do that. You waste people's time. And then especially if you see people scheduling appointments to show the property, you should at least, you need to do your job. If you're one of these lazy agents out here, they got people wasting their time driving to go show your property and your property is already under contract. Shame on you. Ugh. Like, ugh. <laughs> that just frustrates me. Anyways, y'all, we have seen about two or three very promising homes um, that we might consider putting the offer in on but after we finish pretty much looking at everything that we're scheduled to look at today um, we'll have a little kumbaya session and see you know what they want to submit offers on if they want to submit anything so that's where we're at with it that's so y'all we've looked at about 12 houses today and we have circled back to um, one specific house. 
So we're gonna have a little kumbaya and see what's going on. What's what's the thoughts? We're gonna be spending some offers or what? It's 7.30 p.m. y'all. I just departed from Travis and Tia at like 7.20. We were out all day from 11 o'clock. We looked at 13 houses. I'm about to feed myself and then uh, do some comps for them out of the 13 houses. They wanna put in two offers, so. Here we go. Hey y'all. So, I went and met um, Travis and Tia. We went to a new construction that we kind of briefly spoke about yesterday. Um, Syntex Homes. And they have like two floor plans that they, they like and you know, they're interested in. So, you know, they called them and they're like, oh yeah, we'll have some lots available in June. It's like, oh, okay, great. Go up there and <laughs> New builds now are, they're just as overwhelmed with the market as the buyers are. So normally, as you all have seen in my videos, you go up to the sales office for the new build, you see what they have currently in inventory, or you know, you wait until they have a lot available. And usually it's just kind of a first come first serve thing, right? You don't really have to do a bidding war like you do with resale. That is, you know, one of the perks and benefits of going the new build route. Wrong! Centex Homes, where we just left, are now releasing lots. They take your name and information. They release, you know, a couple of lots every week or every other, t or every two weeks. And they set the prices. And they say, okay, make an offer. And whoever basically submits the best offer gets the house so it's basically like doing the whole resale thing like my mind is literally just blown from the, the what this market is doing to the business of real estate like and then they're I'm, they're not the first builder that I've heard of doing this um, DR Horton was actually the first one that I heard of doing it I didn't experience it with a customer myself but go there and they're like oh yeah that's what we're doing we're we're just doing bids so she said they have a list of you know uh, 135 people or so that are interested in certain floor plans they don't release every floor plan every single time um so she said this upcoming tuesday i think they have five or six houses that they're releasing and only one of those houses is a floor plan that my client is interested in and they'll send it out to everybody and then everybody will have three days to submit their offer and then their manager will take a look at the offers and say all right you know you we selected your offer now pay your earnest money and let's move forward and then you don't even have the option to pick selections and finishes and any of that which for some people some people don't really care you know some and some people do like that's another perk of doing a new construction home is to be able to pick you know your cabinet colors your floor colors you know all of that but they have everything pre-selected they send it say hey this is what the house has this is how much we have it priced at what's your offer so just like in the resale world you you have to submit a good offer or you'll get outbid and i i have to tell y'all right now i'm frustrated <laughs> I don't like it. I don't like it. So that's that. Just want to give you all that update. So we're going to do that. We're also going to put in one offer on the house that we saw yesterday. Um, it's a one story house. I think the asking price. Shout out, what was the asking price? $245 is the asking price. But when I did the comps, y'all, the comps on this house only show to be and this is at the high end of the comps too right the it only shows to be like 240 max comparable they're asking what did i just tell y'all they're asking 245 this house there hasn't been a lot of homes that have sold in this neighborhood so it's only and it's a three bedroom home um 1752 smaller on the square footage size compared to the other ones that have sold within the year it's only been like four or five of them 
and three of them were four story houses so you not four story lord four bedroom houses so usually i wouldn't even do comps like that but i just need to see so i did the four bedroom homes that have sold and the three bedroom homes that have sold and i looked at the average sold price per square foot the average sold price per square foot was like i think a uh, hundred dollars or something like that they have theirs listed at something insane and then the highest um sold price per square foot was like 132. so i'm just anyways why was i even telling you all this so yeah so the comps i think that house will have a true appraisal issue so, but we're still going to submit an offer. We're going to submit an offer of 255 because that's, I don't know how, I don't know what other way to explain that this market is a beast and you just, you, you have to do what you have to do, you know, to, to get the offer for your offer to get selected. So we're going to offer 255. I suggested 260, but he wants to do 255. And I'm also going to put in the offer email that in the event that the home does not appraise we are willing to pay 5k more than appraisal price and that's it so at least with that mindset because this this listing agent who refuses to answer his phone um he has to know that this house you have it listed way above than what it it will comp for like you have to i mean not what it will comp for what it will appraise for like he i'm sure he knows this but he probably has a seller who had a, a price set in their mind and you know he's just gonna let them do whatever and in this market the seller may rightfully get you know what he's asking for or more because clearly we're gonna offer even more uh but i'm just so frustrated with it so we're gonna submit that offer ten thousand above asking price with basically a written appraisal contingency hey if it doesn't appraise we're willing to pay 5k more than what it does appraise for you know and whatever else the other um whatever else you know we put in the offer but oh y'all i'm so, mm -mm. that's how i feel <laughs> that is how i feel with real estate right now truth be told good glorious monday morning today is may 24th sipping on my smoothie king as usual I am headed to go meet my mother right now. We are supposed to be going about an hour away to this real estate class. It's um, a luxury class, you know. I have goals of wanting to step more into luxury real estate. So she asked me if I wanted to go with her and I was like, sure. But the weather right now, as y'all can see, is sucky. Um, but that's that. And then also, my client Travis yesterday we submitted an offer on the new construction homes I think in the last clip I was ranting about how these new construction homes are now taking bids on the homes that they release instead of it being a first come first serve um, situation so they released the homes um, this weekend so yesterday we submitted our bids it's, it's literally just like they send an email this is what we're asking for the house give me your offer type of situation so um we submit they released i think four homes four or five four it was four four homes um and we submitted a bid for two of them two different floor plans um and basically five thousand dollars above what they're asking my recommendation was to go 10,000 above, but he wasn't comfortable doing that. And I respect that. But just in this market, you have to be super competitive. Like, I, you gotta be competitive. There's, there's so many buyers out here wanting to buy homes and just not a lot on the market. I'm not gonna say there's no inventory, but there's not a lot. So, so, you know, my recommendation for the 10,000 was just like, you know, hopefully if we go 10,000 above, it won't be too many other offers similar to that. Um, 
but like I said, he wasn't comfortable doing that, so we stuck with the 5,000. So we're supposed to know by 12 o'clock today if he got the house or either one of them or not. So we'll see. Anyways, y'all, I'm sure you can hear this rain pouring down. So let me focus on the road and I will update y'all later. Hey, y'all. So we did not end up going to that luxury class, um, a combination of weather and traffic would have just had us, you know, <laughs> super late to the class and it's too far to be driving all the way out there just to be like there for 20 minutes. So we didn't end up doing that. Um, but I have some updates. Um, Brianna's house, um, Brianna's house, the house that we got under contract earlier this month that has, it's sitting on the double lot and then the extra lot. So I was informed today by the um, lender that the underwriter is not allowing, well, it's not even really the underwriting, it's an FHA thing that they are not allowing this third piece, the third lot to be included on the loan. Um, FHA regulations, I don't know exactly what regulation it is, but you know, that's that's her job to know these things and she knows it. Um, so yeah, so we are stuck in a little bit of a pickle. Now, um, I just got off the phone with the listing agent. We have both decided that we are not going to tell our clients yet about this little situation and see if her and I can work it out first. And then, you know, of course, we'll disclose tomorrow or the next day. You know what happened, but this is how we are going to solve it. You know, it's just sometimes you just don't need to tell them everything right away. Especially when I don't have like a lot of information, you know, like there's really no point in me telling Brianna tonight because there's nothing that can be done because it's five o'clock now that we're just really, you know, figuring out what's happening. Um, I can't get in touch with um, the underwriters, really who I need to talk with to say, hey, okay, well, what can you do to, to help me in this situation? Because you're the one that's basically saying FHA doesn't allow this, so no, y'all can't do it. But what loopholes do we have to be able to get this done? You know, like, is there anything that can be done? And the biggest thing is, is that, well, for Brianna, she just wants it. If we end up taking, my idea was, okay, well, let's just do the sale for the two lots at the same price point and have him deed over the other lot after the fact. But even if he still does that, when you, you know, sign over deeds, you still have to pay taxes. So depending on what the appraisal will now come back at, you know, if the house, if the, if what is contracted now, just the two lots, does not appraise for the total 335, then we're kind of out of luck there because now the lender's not going to pay the total 335. If it does appraise, if the two lots do appraise for the 335, then great. But that's a chance that we're taking that it may or may not. So we would have to wait for appraisal at that point. Um, that was my idea. The listing agent was like, um, what the heck did she say? Can we do, oh, owner financing. Um, she was like, he's willing to offer owner financing um, for the for the additional lot after the fact. But, you know, I need to find out what, you know, his um, criteria is for the owner financing. Like, how much does he want her to pay down and, you know, like, all of that. You know, that would just have to be a decision that Brianna makes if she wants to. So, the biggest issue is that with this lot, if y'all remember... It's, it's like landlocked. So once Brianna buys the, the house that she's purchasing and the lot that has a septic tank for her house on it, it's directly behind it, right? When she buys that, so it's like you go straight back and then right over here to the right is this additional third lot. And then in front of that is another house. So there there is no true way for anybody a third person to come and buy this lot and have access to it like then you have to go in i think i've already i feel like i've already had this discussion with y'all then you have to go into you know doing an easement to
to get to that lot and blah, 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 blah. Ideally, the best owner for this lot is either the house that is directly in front of it or Brianna because she'll it's like an L shape. She'll still have access to that. So, uh, 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 that's where we're at with that. Um, we did not hear back from um, Syntex um, builders about Travis offer on the two homes. The, the contract, the email they sent out said Monday, but I figured that was a typo and we would probably know by tomorrow, Tuesday. So I told him we'll just sit tight and see if we hear anything back by tomorrow. Um, and now I'm on my way to the other side of town <laughs> to show a lease listing. Um, yeah, I got this client off of the house that I sold out that way. Uh, Nikibi and Charles house, they called me wanting to purchase that house, but of course it wasn't available. So here we go. That's the good thing about listing houses, y'all. You get clients from your signs. Yeah. All right. Let me make this a uh, 50-minute drive to the other side. Hello, of the people. It's me. It's me. It's me. It's me. It's me. Uh, <laughs> y'all, I have been ripping and running for the past few days because I am going on vacation for a whole seven days. Okay, not that that has anything to do with real estate. It kind of does, though. So, so, I've been trying to get my life together, you know, just to make sure everything as far as real estate is at a good point so I can biz out and not really have to worry about too much. Still trying to figure out this thing for Brianna's house. Still haven't even told her what's going on. Um, you know, you have to know your client's energies. I know, I, I kind of feel Brianna's energy and I don't want to tell her yet just because I don't want to stress her. I'm like, who am I to stress, that, stress her out like that? Not me. I'm not going to do that. Anyways, the whole point of me getting on here, the appraisal for the parental's house just came in. It, it appraised for $325,000. So the asking price, remember, it was we had originally listed it at $335,000. Then we had lowered it to the $320,000. Um, and then these, the buyers offered 336000 and asked for $16,000 back in, um, closing costs, which is fine because it just balances out. You know, the parentals would have still gotten their 320 full price asking price and then the buyers would have had, um, extra cash, not out of their pockets to close. So... Um, now that the appraisal has come back less than what the offer price is, the agent, he goes, appraised at 325 I'm going to send the amendment tonight. And I'm like, well, well, bro, what are you amending? Because originally what was um, stated when they offered that, I asked him, and this is why you get everything on paper or email or text or whatever. I asked him, I said, will your clients be willing to pay the difference in cash if the house doesn't appraise? And he said, yes, you know, they were just trying to, um, you know, keep as much money in pocket, which, you know, we all, we all get it. But with the way things have gone lately, you gotta, you gotta put these appraisal contingencies out there or at least, you know, get something in writing. So anyways, he was like, okay, well, I'm going to send the amendment. I'm like, well, bro, what are you amending? Cause originally it's really not a big deal. But I still want to know what are you amending? You can't you can't just tell me you're gonna send the amendment. Oh, here you go right now. They are paying the difference, amending to 325 with 5k back in closing. Same deal, just less closing. Yes, yeah, same deal. Okay, good. You know, we're on the same page. But don't just tell me that you're gonna send me an amendment and not tell me what the amendment. Like, what are we amending? What if I don't even agree to that amendment? Or what if the parents, not me, the parents, which they will, it's fine, it's whatever. So, he's going to send the updated amendment saying that the sales price is going to be three twenty-five, dollars and they're going to ask for five dollars back in closing costs. So, that's great because it's an FHA loan and, um, you know, any, any loan regardless. Um, no bank is going to pay more than what the house appraises for. So, three twenty-five, dollars we're going to give them five dollars back 
in closing costs. That means the parents walk away with their three um, three hundred twenty thousand dollars, and the sellers get five thousand dollars to put towards their closing costs. I just said that twice. Anyways, that's it, y'all. That's the update. Boom. So I just called stepfather because technically the house is my stepfather's, <laughs> um, and I told him. And he was like, well, you need to pat yourself on the back. And I'm like, why? He was like, because initially you told us to list it for 325 He was like, so you were right on the money. I was like, I know I was right on the money. <laughs> Hello. Because I'll be doing my comps, okay? This is how you know the comparative market analysis. When you do it correct, you don't miss. <laughs> so, perfect, perfect, perfect happy that this is going smoothly they will be closing next week on the fourth i will not be in town but that's okay they're big girls and boys they can close without me being there <laughs> clearly um and i'll just collect a, a check while i am on somebody's beach in costa rica okay i cannot wait i cannot wait i cannot wait <laughs> the gate is finally being installed y'all finally it is, uh, what, seven days before it's supposed to be closing on the sale of the parental's house. And the gate is just now getting installed. But all that matters is that it's installed before we hand over those keys. Hallelujah. <laughs> Anyways, I'm off to go do a little, another little real estate photo shoot. So I hope y'all like the videos and the pictures. Hello, good people. Hello. It's May 27th. The month is winding on down. The parentals closed on their new house today. Yay. I completely forgot about that. Mother was like, how did, how did you forget? Um, so, anyways, what else do we have to update you all about? Uh, oh, Brianna. I finally spoke with Brianna yesterday and I told her the news about the house. Uh, I don't like using the word unfortunately because unfortunately it just sounds like it's all bad. So what do they tell us to use in airlines? As it turns out or something like that. <laughs> As it turns out, we were not able to uh, get all three lots to be in this one um, contract in this loan. So we are going to have to move forward with the two original lots, the, the lot that the house is on and the um, lot directly behind it that has the septic tank for the house. Um, and we're going to lower the sales price $10,000 to $320,000. And basically, Brianna has agreed with the um, owner of the lot, that you know, the seller, that they will do an owner financing for the third lot and they will um, go into contracts on that lot um, before the year is out. But his main priority is just making sure that the house is sold. Um, and like I've said, you know, it only makes sense for Brianna to own that lot as well, um, just because it's landlocked and nobody else would really be able to have access to it. Um, so that's that with Brianna. Um, Travis, I'm headed actually right now to go meet Travis to look at some more properties. I think the last thing I told you all about Travis was, yes, I was ranting because the new construction was taking bids instead of doing first come first serve. So we submitted our bid $5,000 above, I believe I told y'all that. Um, submitted two on two different houses and he didn't get either so we are now headed to go look at some other properties that same community did say that they were going to be sending out more lots next week to submit bids on so if the opportunity presents itself that we're not under contract by then then we'll give it a shot again um, so that's where we're at with that uh, you know it's just taking a lot longer to get buyers under contract um, in this market, which it just is what it is. Do I like it? Not really. Um, but this is just, this is the game of real estate, baby. It is what it is. And then what else do we have going on? Everybody else is just um, 
building, basically. Um, the builder for Simone's house called me yesterday, needed her to go out and pick some flooring for the house. Um, and yeah, everybody else is just chilling. Um, tomorrow I have a listing appointment with, um, her name is Cora. The first house that I ever sold when I first got my real estate license five years ago. Um, I sold her this house and now she is ready to sell her house. So I'm going over there tomorrow. Um, I need to do some CMAs to see what things are selling for in the market. Um, you know, give her my perspective on, you know, how, what I think needs to be done to the house. If anything, she did say that she's been doing a lot of things to update the house and, you know, get it, um, get it list ready, basically, and then, you know, tell her what I think the price point should be just based upon the market. Um, so yeah, I'm going to go over there tomorrow and do that, and then if I have any homework to give her, then she'll do that probably while I'm gone for the week, because I think I mentioned that I'm going on vacation May 30th through June 5th. I will be gone that entire, where am I going this way? I'll be gone that entire week. So hopefully by the time I come back, she'll have everything done. Hopefully I can get the photographer out um, while I'm gone as well. So all of that will be taken care of. And then when I get back, all I have to do is put it up on the MLS and put a sign in the yard. And get that bad boy sold. <laughs> Um, listings y'all I need more listings so if you want to sell your house or if you know anybody in the Houston area that wants to sell their house send them to me please and thank you anyways it's beautiful it's not raining the sun is out it's hot this is the type of Houston that I'm used to I look at good afternoon it's the day after yesterday <laughs> just checking out today is the 28th of May so right now I'm heading to my listing appointment with um, Miss Parker I don't know if I mentioned it but she's my first client ever that I sold a house to um, so now it's time to sell that house so we're headed to her house to just you know walk through see what everything looks like I already ran the comps um, to see you know what we could potentially list it for so I'm gonna see if she has a number in mind and then, um, you know, we'll, we'll figure out what to get it listed for. Um, but yeah, that's what we got going on right now. Um, I just submitted an offer for Travis on one of the homes that we looked at yesterday. Um, long story short, they are asking 230 for the house. We decided to go ahead and offer $245,000 with an appraisal contingency that the home has to appraise for a minimum of $240,000 and then he would be willing to pay that additional five out of pocket. If the house is not appraised for that two forty, dollars then we have the right to either terminate contract, renegotiate um, pricing, or whatever it may be. So that's where we're at with that. Um, fingers crossed, y'all. I really want to get Travis a house, but I really want it to be the right house for him, you know, that he's, he's comfortable with. So that's, and, and that's not just him, that's all my clients, but especially first time home buyers, you know, they're a little more timid, you know, in the process. And I, I totally get it and I respect it. So that's where we're at today. Um, and then, yeah, this may just really end out the vloggity vlog. Well, I guess I'll get back on here and tell y'all how things go with um, Cora and um, see if we come up on a price. But yeah, that's, that's it. Well, I do think I have a few houses to show tomorrow too. Just work until I get on that plane Sunday morning. Whatever. <laughs>